Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? This is your man, Mr. Business, back with another video. And uh, I gotta say, it's been quite a minute. It has been quite a minute. I wanna say it's been like two months since I dropped the video. Um, yeah, I'm still here at USA. Just, uh, I don't know. It's like when you've been making YouTube videos for a minute, then you just get tired. So I've been saying I was gonna record a video for the longest. So here I am. Um, where am I at? Tip City, Ohio, at the terminal, because boy, you put out of service. Why I get put out of service? Cause my geo tab is not working. Well, it wasn't working, but I got it fixed. So they put me out of service. My geo tab not working. So I had to come here, get it fixed, and everything. So. Talk about USA. What's going on? A lot of things going on in USA. A lot of things going on in USA. So now it's uh, USA slash DB Shanker now. Uh, so that's that's done. The merger is complete as of January first. Um, what else is going on in the USA? I mean, it's 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 really a lot. Um, the compensation they changed the compensation package from sixty five um, sixty five percent. To 70% and they also are taking 70% of our fuel surcharge so now that we used to get 100% fuel surcharge now we only get 70% of our fuel surcharge so um so what's been going on with me so um yeah so let's go back I don't know if I did the last video where I had an engine exhaust leak so uh, that was like uh, a week before uh, New Year's, I believe. Maybe uh, a couple of weeks before New Year's. Um, no, I'm sorry. Um, let's go back. That was actually... Yeah. Uh, around November, end of November, I got an engine exhaust leak. Because uh, it happened right before uh, my girl's birthday. And we went to New Orleans uh, for her birthday. So, yeah, I had pulled into a Petro. The don't the truck just smoking, and uh, got it looked at at Petro. It was like, yeah, this is engine exhaust leak. So, um, it was like, what you want to do? I was like, well, I ain't gonna do nothing yet, cause you know I had to go to New Orleans. So. Um, I was off that whole about about a week, and then I came back and took the truck to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, to get fixed, and that took uh, almost a week too. That took almost a week. So uh, then got back in the truck and took New Year's New Year's off. And I wanted to get back in the truck sooner. It was just nothing on the low board, though. The low board just, it was terrible. Like, there was no loads coming out after New Year's. Not until, I think I came out and started driving, like, on the floor. So, yeah. So, um, so speaking of, hold on. I got to plug my phone in. It's about to go dead. I got a little message saying it's about to go dead. So, just put it on the charge. All right. So it's a, it's a few things I'm gonna talk about. First, I'm gonna talk about everybody's favorite. Um, people still out here getting zero sediments, and it was it was it's probably terrible after the first you know after you know people came back and started uh, driving again, including myself. You know, um, I had like no sediments for like three weeks. All right, but I, I, here's the difference. And I'm, I'm going to drop some tips on, you know what I'm saying, at least what I did to make sure that my bills still got paid even though I was getting zero settlements, okay? Because by the time I started coming back driving, I was 2500 in the hole, 2500 and some change in the hole, okay? So, uh, first things first, I was like, man, what you know, what can I do uh, to get out of this hole quick other than, you know, of course be on the road but you know like everybody else I, you know i got bills to pay i got bills so this is where you gotta look and know what's in your contract okay all right so 
I looked at my contract to see if I could use my escrow uh, security deposit. And lo and behold, one of the things that it could be used for is advanced. All right. So uh, that's what I asked. I actually, I originally asked for like $1,800 for an advance, but they couldn't give me the whole $1,800 because they say your security escrow can't fall below like $1,500. Or something like that so um, I was like all right bet so you give me the the most I can get all right then I talked to my advisor the plan was see this was the plan the plan was I said look I'm in the hole what can I can I get on a little payment plan to come out the hole so the agreement was all right you could pay $300 a week until you get out the hole that was the verbal agreement but that's not what happened so what happened was is that a whole they took like i knew my first check coming out i knew that was gone so i don't even worry about that but the second settlement after that that came out i was like all right well i'm gonna get some money we got this agreement you know what i'm saying i'm gonna have some money to do what i need to do they took all of that so i was like yo that's that's not what was supposed to happen so i got up with my dm i was like look man he, he took my whole settlement and you know that's not what's supposed to happen we supposed to have this agreement 300 dollars coming out of money so he was like i mean uh 300 dollars a week he was like all right well let me see what i could do so in the meantime in between time between the two checks I mean, between the two settlements that came out, knocked it from 25 to like 14 or 25 to like 13 and some change. So he came back and he was like, all right. So he was like, so you asked for security escrow. He said, so what we're going to do is since you only got 13 and some change left, we're going to take $1,300 from security escrow and go ahead and uh, pay off. The rest of your what you owe i was like okay cool and then it just come back you know at a hundred dollars until your security escrow gets back up to 2500 bet so first tip is you got to know what you can do you know what i'm saying to help yourself you got to know what your contract says um that you can do and my contract says that one of the things my security can escrow can use is for an advance so I took advantage second now on top of that i also was taking advances out to pay the bills at the house that i need to pay you know what i'm saying so i did that the thing is you have to be in the truck rolling making money to do that because they're not going to give you an advance if you ain't moving you know what i'm saying so that's what i did i was taking um advances i think i took out like three advances um to pay the bills while i was still um trying to catch up you know what i'm saying and get my stuff right so as long as you have loads on you they'll give you an advance so although i had three settlements with zero you know saying zero balances I was taking out advance so I could still at least cover um, the bills I need to at the house. So that would be the smart thing to do. But you got to be rolling and making money to do that. So um, this week, not this week. Um, what am I trying to say? Uh, so this week will be another, four, this will be my first week getting a settlement where I didn't take an advance. So last week was my last settlement. That I took an advance, so you know, what I'm saying just get to a point where you don't have to take an advance no more and you get back on track. So uh, that's what I did. So I played it pretty good. Uh, that was what I felt was the best of my ability. That was good for me, the family, and still, you know, what I'm saying get the, get the bills at the crib paid. Uh, paid. So you gotta know what you got. You gotta know what you can do. You know, what I'm saying instead of being out here running um, and not getting no type of money flowing in because i still don't understand how people is out here running and not 
getting getting you know um a settlement it's like what are you doing if, if you like i said in previous videos if you are out here running and you are not making a profit you are doing something wrong yes it's bad out here and yes usa low board still to me is not the best but there is no reason why you should be out here running and not getting a settlement. I just find that it's just, um, I ain't even gonna say it's impossible because people is doing it. But in my book, I just don't, I don't see how people is doing that. So just trying to give you, you know, tips on what to do if you find yourself in a hole, you know, some things you can do. Basically, you gotta know what you can do within the rules, what your contract allows you to do. So, <clears throat> just remember that um all right so let's move on to what's going on at usa um i'm not gonna lie it's a lot of dissatisfied people it's a lot of dissatisfied uh ic drivers and um we don't have a lot of ic drivers leave and i know of quite a few that are in the process of leaving um here's the issue this is what it boils down to it's these the lows now we all know it's a down market okay it's a down market and what has come to my knowledge is that usa just doesn't have the freight for all the drivers that they had so another piece of information that came to light is okay when I first started, okay, um, you know, we, ICs was booking loads, you know, company drivers, they booking loads too. So what has, sorry, something on my thing is bothering me. Um, so what has came to my attention is that there's been a shift where it seems like a lot of the loads that we used to have available for ICs to run is not available no more okay so a lot of accounts well I ain't gonna say a lot it's a few accounts you know saying that um, we as ICs used to run are now just being strictly run by company drivers and we were like trying to figure why is that you know in the beginning people was like well what did we lose the account and then somebody would just load a show up on a load board they grab it and then they go get it and they're like yo here's like four or five usa trailers there so the account's not lost so what happened is is that i guess what i was told now you know i'm going to take it with a grain of salt but what i was told was that we were booking our loads too good that we wasn't leaving anything for the company drivers to run so what they start doing is basically dispatching company drivers on loads and then what's left over they give to the ic drivers which i think is just totally backwards you know what i'm saying that's just in my opinion just totally backwards so now what happens is and a lot of the loads that the company drivers run were like some of the best loads that for us that we was running so it's like ew how come it can't be split between ic and company drivers why you got to get them all the loads how come you can't just split it in half and honestly why are you giving them those loads because some of those were short loads but for us those were the money loads when ic's get paid by the mile so they should be getting the longer runs so i don't understand you know that whole scenario and is it happening exactly like i said that's what i was told i'm not for sure but it makes sense at least it makes sense to me and right now it's just like <sighs> on our low board i think well i was looking yesterday or the day before i think it may be yesterday there was a total of like only 700 loads total okay so there are I'm going to say 400 IC drivers, and I 
think they said there's like 1,600 company drivers, okay, or something like that. Anyway, we, we, we have like more total drivers than there are loads on the load board. So I'm going to double check that too. I don't know how many company drivers on there, but I think what I'm saying is accurate. But when I tell you, I'm going to have to check this. I'm going to have to check this. But I believe, well, I know for a fact there's just not enough freight to go around for everybody if we're all picking off the same load board. I don't even understand why companies are, the company drivers is on the same load board as us. They should either A, have their own load board, or B, they should be strictly getting dispatched, and we should have ownership of the load board. But, so, if there's not enough loads on the load board, all right, especially for, like, uh, us IC drivers, you know what I'm saying? Let's just say, if there's 600 loads on a load board and there's 400 ICs, I'm going to just talk about ICs because I don't know what goes on on the company side. So if there's 600 total loads on the load board, there's 400 ICs, right? Now, just because there's 600 loads on the load board, that don't mean it's 600 cut loads on the load board. There's just 600 loads on the load board. So if you factor out, if you factor in California loads or anything west of I, what is it, I-35, you know what I'm saying? So California, Utah, all that, all like the, 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 all West, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, you know what I'm saying? All those hardly ever get drivers, you know, to them states. So out of those 600, you can eliminate those loads, okay? And then... Out of the lows that's left, you're talking about, we're going to say that alone, let's just say that eliminates 200 lows. So now you're talking about 400 lows, all right? 400 lows. Let's say it's 400 IC drivers, and there's 400 lows. So that's technically one low per IC, okay? And then add that. So in that 400 lows, everybody's looking for the good lows and most of everybody knows where all the good lows come out of for the most part for the most part so people will be on the low board just hawking the low board hawking the low board so for instance when i first came here i remember seeing like two three thousand dollar lows sit on the low board for days all right before somebody would pick them up for days now Two three thousand dollar load that don't even last. That don't last minutes, <laughs> minutes, minutes, minutes. I swear it's just they last minutes. And when I say minutes, I, I maybe thirty minutes tops. And that's late at night if they if somebody you know what I'm saying came off a load that they can't do and that don't just be sitting there because ain't nobody scoured the load board because it's late at night and everybody's sleeping. Mostly everybody sleeping because I seen a load this morning that was like 2700 and that was at four o'clock this morning. But when I went back at six, that jump was gone. So, you know, people be on the load for all type of night. So, if there's only technically one load per driver, okay, and um, you know, everybody doesn't travel at the same time, some people's in the shop, whatever the case may be. So, the few good loads that do drop, you know what I'm saying? They get snatched up real quick, real quick, real quick. So, um, as of right now, there's just, it's just not a lot of loads. And USA just keeps hiring drivers, IC drivers, company drivers. So, that just makes it hard on everybody to, you know what I'm saying? That's like, it's like buying a pizza that comes with eight slices, but you're going to invite 20 people to eat eight slices of pizza. You know what I'm saying? And people just keep coming. So now I think about my earlier statement and say, I don't know how dudes out here running and getting zero settlements. 
now explain that situation. Actually, now I know under I know I know why people are out here getting zero settlements. You know what I'm saying? Because just the freight volume is just not it's not there. It's not at least you know what I'm saying not there. And let's just bring DB Shanker into the, into the mix. You know because we it was said that we would have more loads once DB Shanker takes over, and it hasn't materialized to, I would say, it hasn't materialized to what we were led to believe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's some DB Frank, DB Shanker Freight that, you know, that's out there on the load board. But, you know what I'm saying? We were expecting a mass influx of loads. And maybe that's part of our fault because, you know, we want stuff done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now, I understand company merging takes time. You know, um, we were told that um they're trying to push out db franker is i mean db uh, i said franker db shanker freight as quick as possible we're supposed to get a loot we're supposed to get another low board in march uh, at the end of march that they're um building from scratch so i did find that out um and so it's, it's just taking time but I, it's just frustrating as a driver when you you have bills to pay you have family to feed and you know what i'm saying and things are not working out um like you thought they were whether you were led to believe that or you just believe that once db shanker the final the takeover was final you know what i'm saying we all expect these loads to just drop quick fast in a hurry and that's just not the case so a lot of people are leaving a lot of people are leaving i don't know what's going on on the company side but i know a lot of ic is just like shh I can't deal. I can't deal with it because I need to make money. Um, so they're going somewhere else. So also with these DB Shanker loads, they pay good. But what I'm noticing is is that they don't come with a fuel surcharge. So like I took a load um, to Indiana from um, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it was pretty good paying low for the miles but it didn't pay a field surcharge so um I, I don't think a lot of these db shanker loads is gonna pay a field surcharge at least that's what i'm seeing so um when you're picking from the low board like me i mean you know so i'm picking from the low board i'm trying to get loads to have a field surcharge but the reason why i picked that load was because I just needed a load this this ice storm kind of messed everything up so i just i picked that load just so i could have a decent settlement um which my settlement will be uh, it'll be decent i hit my my minimum number so i'll be all right um and i'm gonna try to wrap up this video because i'm already at 23 minutes so yeah so it's been a rough out here like I say, you got to learn, you got to learn how to, you know, change up what you do, you know, before in a lot of my videos, I was like, you know, I'm not touching that, that little small freight, you know what I'm saying, that is be on the board. And for the most part, that's true. But sometimes those are good filler loads or fuel loads. So if you can pick up one that drops in the same day, um, that's what I try to do. I'll try to pick up one as a filler load to use as fuel. Now, I'm not, I'm not. I really don't calculate them. I don't pick up them loads unless it helps me to my bottom line. That's it. And basically, my advice is you have to know what your minimum. Like I've always said in every video, I have a bottom line um, that I want to make and that I need to make. My want to make bottom line is four grand gross. And that's i don't count the fuel you know what i'm saying so we're not talking about with the fuel surcharge i'm talking about line haul four thousand dollars gross line haul if i can make that that's i'm comfortable you know what i'm saying and that's just my want bottom line my need bottom line is way lower than that but that was that would be you know what i'm saying my need bottom line would be like the bare minimum that i could you know make sure all my bills is paid and i'll be okay you know what i'm saying but my want bottom line is at least four grand that's like the lowest i want to make um uh, all week so um 
Yeah, it's tough out here, and I'm going to have to make another video because there's more that I need to talk about that's going on at USA. So I just wanted to bring y'all up to speed on what's going on with me. Um, say I'm still here at USA. I'm still grinding it out. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we'll I'll see you in the next video because this video is already at 25 minutes. So I'm back. I'm going to do some more videos. I'm going to make sure I'm getting to make some more videos. Keep y'all updated with me. All right. So I am signing off. I will see y'all in the next video.